Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio, brought to you by SEO Samba, comprehensive high-performing marketing solutions for mature and emerging franchise brands. To supercharge your franchise marketing, go to seosamba.com. That's S-E-O-S-A-M-B-A dot com. Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio. This is Stone Peyton Lee Cantor here with you this morning. Today's episode brought to you in part by the Business Radio X Studio Partner Program, helping franchisees dominate their local market. To learn more about serving your market and growing your business, go to mybrxstudio.com. Lee, this is going to be a fantastic segment. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast, CEO with the Coffee Peddlers LLC, Mr. Larry Carell. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, Larry. Uh, before we get too far into things, um, tell us about the Coffee Peddlers. Uh, how are you serving folks? Sure. So the Coffee Peddlers was founded last year, 2018, by a couple of disabled veterans here in Arizona. Uh, we own a coffee roastery. We love coffee. So we decided to take the coffee and uh, take it to the consumer. Uh, we started selling in approximately 3,300 stores nationwide. Then we jumped into the uh, private label division, and now we're in the brew and serve go-to-consumer market with our new coffee bikes. And a coffee bike is kind of a cart, but it's a bike, so some combination of the two? Yeah, it's a fully self-contained business on wheels, basically. What it is is a tricycle frame with a sink, hot water, heater, fresh water, uh, it's got the espresso maker, brewed coffee, cold brew tap, nitrogen brew. It's all self-contained, eco-friendly, solar-powered in one unit. You roll it off a trailer, you can actually ride the bike for up to 25 miles. Otherwise, you can park it and brew and serve coffee right there. So now, um, did you create this to be a franchise, or did it start out as, hey, this will be fun, let's do this? We created it as a franchise opportunity with a, a focus on veterans. Uh, being veterans ourselves, we decided that there's additional opportunity. So it's a very low cost entry point, and it was really focused on franchising from the start. Now, a person that uh, has one of these uh, bikes, do you call them bikes? What do you call them? Co yeah, coffee bikes. Uh, when, when they have a coffee bike, is it something that they have um, a place that they go a corner that they go or a festival or is it flexed to any environment? Like I can ride it up to a festival. I'll be there all day or I can ride it to the park or the office park or the office building. Like how does the kind of the selling part when they, they have to stop somewhere and sell it. It's not like the ice cream truck where you wave the person down, right. And they uh, <laughs> bring you a coffee. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, I remember those days. I think those are few and far between anymore. <laughs> they still have uh, that? <laughs> so what we've done is we've done a lot of time, research, effort. We've done events. We've done a lot of case studies and a lot of feasibility studies to figure out what works best so that we can uh, make sure that our franchisees have the best product with the best process going out the door that's going to positively impact their wallet. So what we've done is designed it as part-time work with a potential for full-time income. So I know that sounds too good to be true. And we all know the old adage, if it is, it probably is, but it's not. So we've proven our point. We take these bikes to our downtown tourist area. We can park them on a corner or in any public street uh, or any public parking space or on private property, or we can take them to special events. So here where we're at with our company-owned bikes, we took them to an air show last weekend and in four hours served 307 cups of coffee. Now I'll let you do the math on, on the dollars and cents, but the weekend prior to that, we did another air show in a different city for four hours and we exceeded that. We did over 500 cups of coffee in four hours. So we take them to events, but we also put them in our downtown tourist district when they have art fairs, music festivals, etc., cetera, uh, parades, so you can get all the traffic that's walking by you at a parade. Or we have one gentleman who takes his to a lobby of an office building every morning that has no cafe near it. And he gets about 6,000 employees walking past him twice a day to buy coffee. So it's really up to the franchisee and how much they want to work. 
And so the franchisee just negotiates that with the office building or like, do they have to, if they go to like that um, air show, is that you have to get a permit or is that something that anybody can just show up and kind of sell out of their trunk kind of environment if you're in a spot? It really depends on the municipality here in Arizona. In our county, we have to have a special events permit. It's valid for a year, costs less than $200, and uh, it's very, very cost-effective, very affordable, and that allows us access to any and all special events in the county. On top of that, we have another license that allows us to park it in any public space or private property and serve on a daily basis if we choose to. So it's really flexible. It's really driven by the municipality and the health department in those counties, but We've researched that as well, and we conform to the tightest standard in the country, and that's how we build our bikes, so they conform to the toughest standard in the country so that they don't have any issues anywhere else. Is it seen as a food truck, or is it different? Yes and no. Again, that depends on the municipality. Uh, Here in Arizona, until a year ago, uh, August of last year, uh, Governor Ducey signed into law the, uh, the new law that said that we can have food carts, food bikes, mobile food units. Uh, Prior to that, you had to be in a self-contained kitchen, if you will, or a food truck. So it's considered a peddler's cart or a food service cart, similar to like a hot dog stand on a city corner in New York or Chicago. Like here in Atlanta, they have, um, they sell popsicles in like a little cart where it's just like kind of a freezer and they just have boxes of popsicles and they just hand you a popsicle. Is it the same type of permitting as opposed to, or is this more like you're actually creating the the beverage for them custom, so then it's treated differently? It's basically the same permitting. Uh, as long as it's a prepackaged food with the popsicle carts, they're good to go. With ours, because uh, it's a brewed product, it's not an issue. You can actually brew and serve with the same type of permitting. Again, it's really driven by the, the state, the county, and the city level. But we found that uh, by conforming to the toughest standards in the country, which happens to be on the West Coast, uh, we're able to uh, to go into pretty much any market without any issues. So if somebody approaches you and are interested in the franchise, you help them research the, you know, what to expect permit-wise in their municipality? Yep, exactly. It'll be their responsibility to actually go out and fill out that paperwork, submit it, pay their permit fees, and then provide a copy back to us to make sure they've done it prior to releasing their bike uh, after training here at corporate headquarters in Arizona. But yes, that's uh, a service that we do offer for them as part of the uh, initial franchise fee and initial offering. Now, do they have to be kind of a barista in order to pull this off or are they like, what, what kind of skill set do you need to be a successful franchisee? No skill set at all. We actually just had a 73 uh, year old gentleman that uh, picked up his last week And he went through our two-day training course. We have professional baristas here on staff and a a full training environment here at corporate. So what we do is we bring them here for two days of training. They're taught by a professional barista. And by the time they leave, they're they're ready to go. So this uh, 73-year-old man picked his up and he just does it part-time, tells it behind his motorhome and uh, goes from city to city and just kind of does his thing. But he's only doing special events. So again, very flexible, set up for different types of events or sales. Uh, but no, you don't have to be a professional barista whatsoever. I mean, I, I figured out how to use the thing on my own in about a day. Now, um, so that uh, if somebody was in a market and they said, okay, this, this is something I was thinking of doing a franchise. Um, I like biking and coffee. This seems like the perfect fit. Um, so the, the next step is to contact you and then you, there's an, on, what's the onboarding look like? The onboarding process is pretty simple. Uh, as with any franchise, there is an onboarding process. So we ask people to go to the coffeepeddlers.com. That's with an S. And then click on the franchise tab. And there's a couple buttons there. They can they can watch the video. They can read about the processes and about the, the bike and why we did this, how we did it, and what they can expect. Once they, uh, they click on to the uh, Take Me to My Future button, uh, it'll take them to our form. They fill out their information, send it to us, and then we send them a complete franchise information package with our options, which we have three basic packages, or they can custom make one. So we send them a package with options, pricing, terms, conditions, etc. And then once they're serious about moving forward, they can also apply for 100% financing with up to 90 days deferred payments uh, for qualified folks right there on our website. So we make it as easy as possible 
so they don't have to go out look for financing. And we're not talking a lot of money. We're talking between $9,000 and $18,000 on the high end, and that includes the franchise fee. So it's very affordable. The onboarding process is very simple. And then, um, so for that fee, they get the bike, they get the know-how, and then uh, then they're off to the races. Exactly. We've designed it to where when they pick a package, we put that package together over the couple of weeks while they're doing their paperwork in their city, their business license, their EINs, their health department paperwork, et cetera, which we help them with. But while they're doing that, we put their bike together with all of the equipment and other accoutrements that are necessary. The espresso maker, the cups, cup holders, napkins, everything that they need and that they've chosen. So when they come here for their two days of training, when they leave, they could literally set up in our parking lot and start selling coffee right then and there. <laughs> now, uh, so so how does it get, because it seems like a pretty big thing, how does it get from you to wherever they are? So we can either create it and ship it to them. Or uh, if they have a trailer, they can pick it up on a trailer. Most people have us create and ship to them, and then they it's already assembled. And then we already box and package coffee and the espresso maker and urns and everything else they need, carafes, et cetera. So they basically open it up like Christmas, and they just put all their stuff on their bike. Uh, and, of course, we give them detailed drawings and uh, pictures on how best to set it up for uh, uh, feng shui, if you will, or the uh, ease of use for ergonomics. So it's very simple. We thought that one through too, and uh, they can either pick it up and go, or we can create and ship. Now, uh, once they have it, then you recommend them having some sort of a trailer as well? Correct. Um, We have a couple people who don't. They leave them parked, uh, like the one gentleman leaves it parked in the lobby every day of an office building. He doesn't move it. He does have a trailer. With our corporate-owned units, we put two in a trailer. And then uh, we can go to two different events, drop it off with uh, with staff, and uh, that's how we transport ours. You could ride it, but it's not really designed to be on the road uh, for that long. Uh, the battery on the motor, which of course is optional, will only last you up to about 25 miles at 20 miles per hour. So it's kind of limited on distance that you want to ride it. And it's solar that controls the cooking of everything? It's through solar power? So we have a electric power pack that's eco-friendly that's recharged with solar. So we have a a solar panel on top of the canopy Mm -hmm. that trickle charges the batteries. And we also have an external power unit that's uh, electric that's also charged via solar via trickle charge. So it's completely self-contained, eco-friendly. You can use it indoors. You don't have to have extension cords. If you do, that's preferred, but you don't have to. And you don't have to have a gas generator. So you don't have to comply with the fire department rules when you go to events because you don't have gasoline. You don't have the fumes. You don't have the hassle, the noise, the problem. So it's uh, fully self-contained and eco-friendly. Now, you mentioned that you were a veteran and uh, uh, the veteran community was more important to you. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and how that um, how you serve the veteran community through this? Yep, absolutely. So for veterans, disabled veterans, we offer 10% off or $1,000, whichever is higher on their package. So as veterans ourselves, we support the veteran community. We want to make sure that our fellow veteran business, we know and understand that veterans make great franchisees. They're not afraid of risk. They're hardworking. They understand the importance of, of working hard. Uh, and it's been proven nationally that veterans make very good entrepreneurs. So we're focused on helping our fellow vets get into business. And we're doing that with the low cost entry point with something that could promote very high profit margins for them long term. So with the focus on veterans, like you say, we offer 10% off or $1,000 off the package, whichever is higher, depending on the package they purchase. So our focus is uh, truly to just employ more vets, disabled vets. Uh, We love giving them opportunity that they may not otherwise have. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Franchise Marketing Radio. Stone Payton, Lee Cantor here with you. We are visiting with the CEO of the Coffee Peddlers LLC, Mr. Larry Carell. Larry Stone here with a couple of questions around the uh, the sales and marketing aspect of things from the franchisor point of view, your point of view. Uh, what marketing vehicles, if any, are you finding the most effective to get the word out about this opportunity and then get viable candidates uh, engaged in a in meaningful conversation? Is it is it direct mail? Is it pay-per-click? Is it I don't know. What's working for you in that regard? 
we've just launched our massive marketing effort about 29 days ago. <clears throat> so what we've done is really relied on word of mouth and social media currently. That's the quickest, least expensive way to advertise it to keep costs low. We also rely on word of mouth. And we've also had some uh, email blasts as well as a little bit of direct mail. But we found the best, honestly, is, is pay-per-click and social media engagement as well as, uh, like with you gentlemen, radio, TV, and uh, to get the word out to the, the masses. So the biggest bang for your buck, if you will. And then from the franchisee's perspective, um, I mean, a piece of me thinks maybe the best thing I can do is show up because it's a really cool-looking cart and it's coffee. Who doesn't like coffee? But are there some things that you're finding are working better for the individual franchisee to get the word out about what you know what they're doing, providing the the coffee at these events? And then so you... what we're helping them with is the advertising and marketing piece. So if people go to our website, they can see upcoming events. So let's say we have an event in Atlanta, for example. We'll post that on our website. Folks can go to the website and see where the coffee peddlers' locations are going to be or franchisees. So we are finding that the bike itself turns a lot of heads and grabs a lot of attention. We have a lot of good comments on our Facebook page about how cool it looks, how you know, people want to be involved with it, how they absolutely love the look of it. So we've really designed it to catch attention. And once we've caught your attention, then you see it's coffee or espresso. It were there. 83% of Americans drink coffee on a daily basis. So that's 83% of the people that walk by are potential customers. So once you, you show them the bike and draw them in, the rest is plain and simple. It's fresh coffee. We roast it here in-house and green to gone in 48 hours. So it's a green bean to roast it and gone in 48 hours. Wow. Well, and I absolutely love that. First of all, you're providing me with something tangible that just by being out in the marketplace, I've got probably one of the best marketing vehicles there is in this in, in this coffee bike that people can see and touch and taste and feel, but then you've, at corporate, you've created this place for this growing community of mine to go and very quickly and easily see where I'm going to be next weekend and the weekend after that. Correct. I love it. So we, we want to support those franchisees. We want to drive traffic to them. We've designed the processes on this end, and that's what they get in training, is how to identify where to sell. And that's primarily events where there's a lot of a lot of consumers, a lot of traffic. Brick and mortar locations, those are great, but they're expensive. And the consumer doesn't want to be inconvenienced by having to go to those. Therefore, we're in the go to consumer market. So my daughter and I went to a uh, taco festival a couple of weeks ago in Scottsdale, and it was great. Uh, there were over 30,000 people. 83% of 30,000, by my math, is a lot of people <laughs> and that's potential customers. So it's, uh, it's really identifying the biggest bang for the buck for the franchisee and making sure that they're prepared for that. So now if somebody wants to really max out their market, is it a combination of, you know, have a spot every day or maybe one for early in the day and one for afternoon and then go to an event every weekend? Like, is there a recommended, you know, kind of way to attack your week? Yep, exactly. Um, and again, it depends on the package they pick. So we've designed our packages and equipment based on volume and based on the potential that that franchisee sees. In other words, our base package is our quick start package. You can be in business in 15 days. It's really designed just to take <laughs> out one or two days a week to an event. The next package is our cruiser package. It's a little bit more robust, has some more equipment, and it's made to go out four or five times a week, three, four times a week, mainly to events and serve coffee. And then you've got our pro peddler package, and the Pro Peddler package has all the bells and whistles on the bike, comes with coffee, cups, K-cups that we make here in-house, everything that they would need to sell packaged and brewed coffee. And they can take that out for up to seven days a week if they choose. But we've really designed it to maximize the sales through our processes. And again, those are proprietary processes that they'll learn in training and how we do that. But yes, you could take it out one day a week and just make some money, or you could take it out seven days a week or five days a week, completely up to their uh, their choosing. And uh, we'll help them figure that out as well, depending on what their goals are at the end of the day. And um, what's the personal best that someone's ever done at an event? Um, item 19 of an FDD says we can't really disclose 
dollars, but I can tell you from personal experience, uh, we did $145 net at an air show two weeks ago. Uh, that was really, really good. Um, and that's about what we see on average, somewhere between 120, 140 net, net mm-hmm. profit per hour after all expenses. So that's at a good event. So it just really depends. And then, uh, this is a turnkey operation, right? They don't have to go and source coffee or cups or napkins or anything. This is, they get the whole shebang. 100% turnkey. When they walk out of our door after training, uh, they could, like I said, literally take the bike, set it up in the parking lot, start selling coffee. Good stuff, Larry. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, if somebody wanted to learn more, website one more time. www.thecoffeepedlers, P-E-D-D-L-E-R-S dot com. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Payton. Our guest today, Larry uh, Corral with the Coffee Peddlers. We will see you all next time on Franchise Marketing Radio.